Welcome to all of you. So glad you're here. It's another episode of The Nonprofit Show. And today we have one of my favorites, Sarah Groney, and she's joining us from Project Big Impact. She's going to talk to us about assessing your NPO brand or your nonprofit brand. And she's got a lot to share about this. So stay with us as we dive deep into this conversation with Sarah. Before we do that, we'd like to remind you who we are. So hello to Julia, Julia Patrick. She's the CEO at the American Nonprofit Academy. She's invited me to be her tag along. I'm Jarrett Ransom, (laughs) your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And I love being a co-host alongside with you, Julia, Mm -hmm. having these high level conversations day in, day out, Monday through Friday, since March of 2020. So we're coming up on nearly 800 episodes and we wouldn't be where we are today if it was not for our amazing partners. So thank you to our presenting uh, partners. I want to give a shout out to our besties over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Do yourself a favor, do us a favor, do our sponsors a favor, check them out because they're really here to help you lean into you, your mission, your team, your community, um, and whatever you need, they are part of the solution. So, hey, as I mentioned, nearly 800 episodes, that's 800, I cannot believe it, Um, but you can find our episodes on Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV as well as podcasts. So cue us up wherever you stream your podcast and all of your entertainment. Um, And this episode actually with Sarah will be up in just a couple of hours on all of those platforms. And without further ado, drum roll, I want to introduce Sarah Groney uh, back to the show. You've been on before, Sarah. It's it's been a couple of months, maybe a year, time flies, Um, but you are CEO graphic designer at Project Big Impact. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so excited to have you and here in the thought leader space to talk to us about assessing your nonprofit brand. Tell us a little bit before we dive into this, you know, to the crux of the conversation about yourself and about Project Big Big Impact. Yeah, um, I have a a long background in working with um, in as a program support person for nonprofits, mainly in the mental health, developmental disabilities space, and took a big leap out of that when I had my kids and became a creative consultant for nonprofits, starting with marketing and communication support, and then really just fell in love with branding and all things graphic design, supporting um, print and digital design to really drive a mission forward. Um, I love it. You know, you can have the most amazing programming and project and be doing the work of the angels. But we all know that if you don't have a strong presentation with all these elements, you don't get anywhere. I mean, it's really kind of one of those heartbreaking things. Um, And so I'm really excited to talk to you about this because um, it's one of those things that I don't think nonprofits spend enough time with assessing the nonprofit brand. And so I'd love to kick us off by asking you, why do this? Yeah. I think there's two really great reasons to do this. First, all of this work starts very internally. Um, Having your your team aligned to what the mission is. I think it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day, the programming, the fundraising, and this this machine that just never stops. And there's there's always work to be done. But to really take a step back and dig deep into why we're here, how you talk about your org, help your staff and your board talk about your organization in a way that's really aligned with your mission. um, And also helps them align with how they're showing up to serve. Um, if they if they know and have a clear picture of what this, the, the bigger vision for your organization is and how you talk about yourselves in marketing and in the world and how all these aspects of how we communicate what we're doing and all these really impactful programs, I think we create better ambassadors for our, our mission if we know our brand. That is so fascinating, you know, and I have to have to say, because I, this is what I I feel to be true is we often as nonprofit leaders inherit the brand, right? It's like the logo was designed 30 years ago. The colors were picked 30 years ago, the tagline, the mission statement. And so often we're working off of something that like many variations of leaders and team members, as you said, Sarah, inherited. 
So that to me is like, why not assess it for the current state, the current mission, the current, you know, everything going on. Have you seen that as well? I have. I think when organizations are founded, you just, you need a logo because you just need one and you need to get your name out there and something gets created maybe in like 30 years ago, like you said, um, in some old word doc or whatever that is. And now like you need a little more professional or you want a banner and you're realizing like, oh my gosh, this really gets super blurry. And while we're at it, like we don't know how to recreate it or there's files that have been passed down over mm-hmm. years, decades. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if it's a newer organization, where you started and where you are today may be really different and who you're reaching and how you're serving. Um, and a lot of these visuals that we think of as a, a brand, we think we most of us go to think of visual the the logo and the typography and the colors that we use um and does it align and does it speak to who you are today yeah right so let's let's navigate then to that next piece of it because i love right off the bat like just having the courageous conversation about internally assessing but help us understand the difference between branding and brand because i feel like jared these two things get flipped around and and used improperly yeah. I mean, what, Sarah, h- help us understand that. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of organizations start out with, we just need to get a logo up. We need the visual so that we're out in the world and we make a name for ourselves. Um, and many of us skip over, not just nonprofits, but as business owners, we skip over like the roots of what is supporting those visuals and what we're putting out into the world. So I think we need to look at our organization values, which are separate from our personal values. And I think a lot of founders that that becomes really enmeshed um, and that's <laughs> wonderful thing. Um, but separating like, what is our organization value and what do we want our staff to emulate when we're doing that? And does that align with our mission and the reputation that we're seeking and the brand personality? Like, are you a very corporate top-down kind of educational organization? Or are you like grassroots? Like those are both going to have very different personalities. You're reaching out um, in different ways. And then branding is all the the visuals that help communicate and tell that story. Um, we've all heard the picture tells a thousand words, but you need those words and those roots and those the, the grit behind the photo to be able to tell the right story. You know, you speak about... Um digital and we are such a digital age now. And I cannot imagine, you know, shifting away from that. So, you know, when many of these organizations were formed, obviously the dot-com era had not begun the digital fundraising, the digital communication to the level that it is today, Sarah, it was probably not even a conceived thought, right? And so how does brand and branding play into the digital space? Because as you just said, like a brand is your brand, but branding, what I understand is like, that's a continuous effort. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about how we can continue this effort of branding of our brand um, into this digital space. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to communicate what your brand does um, outside of print now. Um, it's in every touch point. I feel like it, it reaches so deep into what is your your donation page? Does that look like your organization when right. folks are donating? Does it match the, the visuals? Building that trust, knowing that you are capable in building this brand, but then also if a donor is redirected to a donation page that looks totally different than your organization, like, ooh, did I click on something wrong? Am I yeah. giving the right organization? Um, it might stop people in their tracks or just the, the brand recognition. I like to think that people see and read and notice all the things we do all the time, the first time we put them out there. But I think it takes what, seven, seven, seven. times noticing or reading something or hearing something about it. So having a really consistent brand, especially in this fast age of like scrolling through Instagram and TikTok, like you got to be really recognizable. Um, and to be recognizable, you have to have a very clear kind of strict brand guidelines to say like, this is who we are. This is, this is the font that we use this is the the visuals that we put out there. Exactly. You know, Sarah, I think you're, you're, you're speaking my love language because I think you have to deal with that. And I have recognized over the years that I think internally we grow weary or tired of our own branding and we forget that we are seeing this from the minute we walk into the parking lot or we, 
open up our laptop or whatever that we're seeing these messages but to your point with all of this stuff coming at us the average donor investor or citizen or client they're not seeing all that i mean so they have to be reminded and this has to be reinforced and so it seems to me like there's there's a competing force there internally versus externally and kind of understanding what that looks like and so that kind of leads me to the next question is and and a point that you bring up is understanding that ideal audience what does that mean um so that to me that means who are you speaking to that's that's your donors and your funders and we're always asking for money but how else are you telling your story and who you're telling that story to um are you showing up and serving and providing some education to your community? Are you reaching out and have a really large volunteer team? Um, all of those touch points outside of just talking to donors and these really important events and galas and things that we we really focus brand, like on making just right for uh, like on target for our brand. But like there's so many other parts of our brand that mm-hmm. um, that and parts of our audience that we need to include in that brand recognition. Um, and I think making it really easy for our team members to do that as well. So it's not just one person who's in charge. It's not the marketing team or the CEO who's in charge of like making sure that brand happens. Like they can set up good systems, but then giving your team the tools so that all the people that they're reaching out to and speaking with and doing peer-to-peer fundraisers, like Arizona Gives Day is coming up here in Arizona. And um, like, how are they like just handheld them through that and give them the tools so that they can speak to your organization to their friends and family like far and wide Mm -hmm. sarah you mentioned a couple of currently popular uh social media right and so i'm curious how we can understand our audience when it comes to different platforms can you talk to us about that and how like how we can best maintain our brand integrity, if you will, and and integrity of our branding on various platforms that innately attract a different audience? Good question. That's a great question. Might be a curveball, but I know you can knock it out of the park. No, I I love that question. I I love that question, Jared. I think that's really, it's, it's a fundamental question. Yeah, I think, so there's a lot of tools that are available. The analytics behind it can give you a good guess on who is showing up for Instagram, what time of day they're showing Mm -hmm. up might give you a really good indication for who's like, if they're around lunchtime, they're probably in the office working and scrolling Instagram on lunch. But if they're late at night, maybe they're, I don't know, a tired parent who just needs a little break and they're they're looking then. Uh, (laughs) Right? Um, Like who is showing up? uh, on each platform might give you a better indication of what content would be served there. Like we all know LinkedIn is a little more professional, but, um, and I don't think a lot of organizations have really latched on to the, the TikTok trend, but there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then another question is, you know, do our audience or audiences ever change? And I asked this because I was just at an organization where, you know, they said what used to be our audience was, and yeah. they they painted this picture of a certain demographic, mm-hmm. but that's no longer our audience. We do have that, but we also have this other audience. So I'm curious if you can talk to us ever so slightly about your experience and what you're seeing with an audience shift. Yeah, I've seen that happen when there's like a new program that's being yeah. initiated or they're serving yeah. a new population. Or they're bringing in, maybe they have like a mastermind chat full of community members who are really specific and trying to solve a problem. And that branding for that new, which is a very targeted, intentional, like we want to bring these people into the conversation uh, to help us problem solve and to help us network and possibly provide some funding. But that branding for that new audience is going to be a little bit different. It still needs to be tied, but it it, it creates take some creativity and how do you align that with your overall brand and maybe have an offshoot. Maybe there's a really younger generation. There's like some mentors or something. And like, how do you make that a little more fun and a little more approachable um, and then still maintain the integrity of your, your overall brand. But if you make a really large shift and you notice like a majority of your audience is now shifted away from what it used to be, maybe think about a a full rebrand and, yeah. Uh, reach out and communicate, freshen it up and 
um, change up some of your messaging also along with your brand, like how the, the messaging and how you talk about your programs and right. how you um, mm-hmm. bring people into that conversation and tell stories is really key as well. So before we touch on uh, what I believe is probably our final key talking point for today, I'm curious when we talk about (laughs) assessing our NPO brand or our nonprofit organization's brand, do you have a recommendation on how often we should assess it? Is this an annual six years, six months? Like, should we keep a finger on the pulse all the time? What is kind of the, you know, the rule of thumb, if you will, Sarah, when it comes to assessing our brand? Yeah. Um, I think a brand should last at least five years. I think if you aimed to over 10, knowing that these values, and if it's really grounded in your mission and your values, it's not going to change unless your organization's mission changes. Sure, uh, It really needs to be for the long haul. Um, but a trendy brand that changes a little bit, or there's a new campaign that's coming up that you try something out with might be a fun opportunity. There's, it's not to say that you can't vary throughout the year. Maybe you have an annual campaign that's a little, a little different, or your gala branding is a little bit different. Um, but the heart of your brand should really be aimed for longevity and not something that's super trendy that needs to be changed after year year after year, partly because your board's not going to want to pay for it every year. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not, you, have to do. you don't need to be spending money. It seems a little wasteful to continually yeah. change it. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. You know, I have to say, Julia, and I'm curious if you hear this as well, many strategic plans that I have facilitated, often their brand comes mm-hmm. up brand, marketing, communication, you know, and I'm curious from a board's perspective and lens, Julia, if you could speak to us about, you know, how the board plays a role in brand and branding. You know, I think it's a really good question because to me, for the different boards that I've served, um, if you have folks, and I'm from the media, uh, media background, if you have folks on that board who resonate with that piece of, of, of American business, then you have the push. But sure. if you have folks on the board that are not engaged in communications, in marketing, in any media whatsoever, it falls by the wayside. And it seems like an expense. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the tone and tenor of that board pushing leadership is like, well, look for something free, look for something pro bono. Yeah contrary to board members that have some foot in that that marketing media communication sector i have to tell you ladies they're always like there's not enough money in the budget for this you know they're always like pushing let's get more money let's get more money so it's it's extremely different yeah it's extremely different and i think you see that in communities across america Mm -hmm. those those organizations that might be I hate to say it, but doing kind of hokey things, but they have money and they market. They're at the top of the the charts every, every month, you know? Yeah. You know, and just yesterday, our conversation was with um, a give back nation. We talked about Google ad grants and how, you know, I'm sure that plays a big piece into branding and, and all of it, but Hey, let's, let's dive into our, our final talking point, which can open up a whole nother can of worms, but we're going to talk about the brand's voice. And so cultivating the nonprofit's brand voice. What does this mean? I like to start with two questions is what do you stand for? That one's generally easy to answer. And then what do you stand against that? That kind of cuts through the the noise of this is what we don't want to see in our world. This is what we don't want to see in our brand. This is what we don't want to see um, in how we we talk about our organization Um, is what we want to eliminate for the people that we're serving. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I think really cutting to what do we, who do we, who we are right now. Um, And then you can, uh, I I also like to dig into questions. Are you a little more masculine or feminine or professional or approachable Um, and kind of narrow things down. It's kind of like deciding who you are, you know, like those little personality quizzes (laughs) I like to take. (laughs) Um, But who, like a lot of that really is like, do you show up? aligned with your mission, aligned with the audience you're trying to serve. And then the voice really ties it all together. Are you, um, are you, are you speaking to others 
And is your, are your visuals aligned with how you want to serve and who your programs are really impacting? Because at the end of the day, it's really to, to bolster, all of this work is to bolster the really important stuff that's being done in our programs and the work that is changing our world. Um, but if we can't build brand recognition, then yeah. it's harder to support the people who are doing the really good work. Yeah. I love those two questions. Would you say I them again? Do. What do you stand for? Okay. What, what do you stand against? Yes. Yes. You know, that to me is it's so really fascinating good. because we've seen over the last three years, as we refer to them, multiple pandemics, right? Like we've had the global Plural. health crisis. Yeah, we've had social injustice. We've had political divide. So I think really asking those questions, what do you stand for? What do you stand against? And how that integrates into brand, branding, and then our voice when it comes to the brand. Um, that to me is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's- you know those, are you courageous enough to say those out loud and continue that? <laughs> So it's one thing to say it in a quiet room, but are you willing to like really take a stand against something yeah. happening in the community? Yeah. And knowing that that might impact um, someone's opinion on the organization. And I've heard this, I've heard this over the last three years, you know, is that, well, I'm not going to donate to this organization because of their stand on X, Y, and Z, but I've also heard the flip script, right? Which is I'm absolutely supporting this organization because they stand for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I love that you said that because I think also it's Sarah, to your point, it's not just the opposite of what you want or what you stand for, you know, I mean, it digs deeper and, and asks a, a courageous, um, for a courageous conversation. It's really powerful. And I love that. I, I think that's a, a brilliant, brilliant thing. And, you know, for, for any of our viewers watching, I can see this being, um, what is it that, that our organization doesn't want being an amazing exercise at a board retreat or a, just a, a plain board meeting? Um, because I bet, I bet it would raise some points that people are shocked by, Yeah, you know, really amazing. Well, one of the things that we're not shocked about is all of Sarah's and an wonderful and insightful work. And if you go to her website, you will see a bunch of resources that are free that you can download and they're really cool. Um, I loved Sarah, the online donation page checklist. I thought that was great. And then I loved the, the counter piece of that was that you had the one for digital fundraising. And so if you look at one, take a look at the other and you can kind of see the differences and and the similarities at the same time, really powerful stuff. So um, don't miss this amazing opportunity. You can get it at projectbigimpact.com and learn even more about Sarah. Her website's beautiful. And Sarah, you were sharing with us in the uh, green room, you're kind of going through a rebranding yourself. <laughs> and a lot of that is this internal stir that's coming from that, uh, ask that I ask uh, any of the organizations I worked with is like, what is my mission? What do I want to be doing? Um, and how does my current brand reflect that? How does my website portray what I, the packages that I want to serve and the programs that I want to serve um, and the people that I want to work with? Is that drawing them in? Is that welcoming the right people and closing the doors on the wrong people? Um, what do I stand against? What do I, who do I not want to work with? And maybe uh, the brand that I have attracts the right people and repels the ones that I don't. So, yeah, yeah I love that. And, you know, it, it's so important o over the, the years and I've been in business 14 years and I, I will be extremely transparent. Sarah has helped me many times over the years with my own work. And I really enjoy working with you, Sarah, really enjoy having you guide me through many of these resources and practices that you spoke of here today when it talks about our brand, because you know, really that brand, as you mentioned, it's not just for nonprofits, right? It's for any business and dare I say, really any person, you know, that personal brand is a big piece of this as well. So uh, kudos to you and uh, doing the good work in and around our communities and around the nation. Um, for those of you watching and those of you listening, please do check out Project bigimpact.com. Sarah Groney here, CEO, graphic designer at Project Big Impact. She's got a lot going on um, and a big heart to help. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me.
it's been a lot of fun. I, I really have loved um, so many of your comments, Sarah, because this topic makes people crazy. I mean, they get so freaked out by it, overwhelmed by it. And there's so much fear there. There's fear about doing something uh, wrong. And so I think a lot of times just people st step back. And, and so I really have loved some of these things that you've talked about um, because it is a process. And as Jarrett mentioned early on, it's a journey that you need to you always be thinking about. It's not a one and done. And so it's really been a lot of fun. Again, check out Project Big Impact. Um, yet again, you've been with Jarrett. Ransom, the nonprofit nerd. I like to call her my nonprofit nerd. I'm CEO of the Raven Group. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Again, we have been enjoying tremendous support. And so I really do, from the heart, want to express my gratitude uh, to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique. Nonprofit Nerd and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These folks showed up and they reached out to us and said, we want to be a part of these discussions. And um, and so here we are today going into our fourth year, basically starting our fourth year this week. So again, it's a it's been a powerful time for us. Sarah, this has been great. I look forward to working with you some more and hearing more about this because it's such a fundamental concept for many, many of these 1.8 million nonprofits that serve day in and day out across our great country. It is. And the this work that you're providing, congratulations on three years. This is Thanks. a phenomenal resource for all of those organizations. Um, I'm honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're so glad that you are. Um, it's been quite the journey and everyone that's come on has been also a huge part of the success. So thank you. Um, and thank you also to all of our viewers, our listeners. We're not going anywhere. Unfortunately, this conversation is wrapping up, but we'll be back on tomorrow as well. And again, you can find uh, today's conversation with Sarah on all of our streaming platforms that we mentioned earlier. And uh, we hope that you will check them out as well as projectbigimpact.com. So thank you. Hey, ladies, thank you so much. As we like to end every episode, we want to remind everyone to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Mm -hmm.